If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out his plan for us. So welcome to church. All right, good morning, Antioch family. We are so grateful that you guys decided to join us on this day, this busy weekend where all the things are going on. We're so grateful that you chose to get up today and worship Jesus with us. If you're new here, we just want to say hello and welcome. We hope you feel at home. Before you leave today, just make sure you stop by that connect table. We have a gift for you. We'd love to shake your hand and meet you and your family. So as we get started with our worship service today, we just like to start off with thanksgiving. And the point of this is because we want to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Before we even go into asking requests or learning about him, we just want to thank him for what he's done and who he is. So today we're just going to quiet our hearts, forget all the things that have happened this morning or what happened this past week, and we just want to look to the one who's given us all our blessings today. So what that's going to look like is we're just going to pray out to him and thank him for anything that comes into our minds and on our hearts, and you can do that out loud, you can do that in your head, but the more that you step out, the more you'll encounter him. So maybe just think of something that you're a little uncomfortable doing and do that today. So if you guys want, you can go ahead and stand up, and we'll just go ahead and get started. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you that you went to the cross for us, that you endured sickness and, and shame, and, and everything that was on us, God, you bore that so that we could live in freedom. Go ahead, church, just lift your voice today. Thank him for who he is. Thank him for what his word says. We thank you, Jesus, God, that you are a chain breaker. We thank you, God, that every sickness, every sin that we have, everything is broken in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the lamb, we have freedom today. We thank you, Lord, that you are freedom, God, that you give this relationship to us, God, and it's all benefits, Lord you bear everything that we go through. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you live inside of us, that you are showing us how to walk. You don't let us go through this alone. Just think about what he's done for you, church. Think about everything that he's brought you through. Father, we thank you that even when we don't know what to say, you teach us how to pray and you show up, God. Even when we're quiet in our hearts and in our minds, Lord, you're here. I thank you that you're in front of us right now just waiting for something to break out. You're waiting and you're saying they don't even know what's going to happen in the next 10 minutes, in the next 30 minutes. Because I'm about to walk in the room. We thank you, Jesus, that you're waiting to fall on this people. You're waiting to fall on your church, God. And we say we welcome you. We open our hearts and ask, Father, would you come in and have your way. We surrender. We make room. We give you space. Church, welcome him in today. He's waiting to hear your voice. He's waiting for you to step out. It doesn't matter what the person next to you is doing. It doesn't matter what's going on in your heart. He wants to know he's welcome here. He's welcome in your life. You give Jesus, life. we thank you for who you are. You give life and we thank you, Lord. Lord, even when you we forget life. about you, all it takes is one word saying, I'm sorry, God, come into me, God. You will be there. 
church, if this is the sixth time you're walking around Jericho, don't stop him now. You've got one more walk to do. You've got one more round to make. Praise him like this is the seventh time around Jericho, like your breakthrough is around. Thank him like he's coming. You thank give you, Jesus. life, you give life, and we thank you. Oh, we love you, Jesus, and we thank you that this is just the beginning. You're doing something special here today, God, and we just make room for you. We're expectant for you, and we love you deeply, Jesus.
praises and thanksgiving. Sing it out, come on. Sing it out, sing it out, thank you, Lord. So I yield to you into your careful hands. Yield to you, Lord. When I trust you, I hold me to understand. So I yield. So I yield to you into your careful hands. When I trust you, I.
worship Him. The Lord is among us. I'm not trying to hype you up. I'm, I'm pointing you to the one who's among us. When we worship Him, He comes. Let's honor Him. Let's give Him the, the honor that He's due this morning. If you need to close your eyes right now, every child, every adult, every, every believer in here, Set your eyes on the worthy one right now and take your eyes off of every lesser thing and bless him with the fruit of your lips. Just give thanks. He's here. He's here. He's honored us with his presence. He's among us. He's among us. Madeline prayed this morning about the walls of Jericho. Then had another word that The word was, I just feel like we need to shout. The person who gave us gave me that word didn't know that we had the same breakthrough on Jesus' night. It was with a shout. This is not about hype. But there's something about a shout that brings down walls. I was trying to discern the, the stillness that was in here as we started, even in this morning. In our, in our pre-service meeting, there was a stillness here. And I'm like, Lord, is that, are you doing something? Or is it, are our hearts dull? What's, what's happening? I don't know, but I do feel like the Lord wants to bring breakthrough as we shout. As we lift our voice to the Lord. There's something about a shout that brings down the walls. It's, it doesn't make sense. But we, we apprehend by faith. And we lift our voices. There's something about the lifted voice in giving thanks, in singing, in acknowledging the holiness of God. And so I, I want us right now just to begin to lift our voice. Just to begin to lift your voice. Beyond, beyond a whisper, just begin to lift your voice for breakthrough. We need the Lord. We need the Lord. It's, it's His oxygen in your lungs this morning. It belongs to Him. Give it back to Him. If you're, if you're experiencing uh, oppression and, and, and just demonic heaviness, the Lord has given you a garment of praise. Put it on this morning. Lord, we bless you this morning. We reject hype. We don't need hype. We need your presence. And we bless you. And we worship you. We found the one who's worthy. And we, we've determined to bless you with the fruit of our lips this morning, Lord. We love you. We honor you. We love you. We honor you. The walls come down. The walls of depression. The walls of oppression, Lord, the, the walls, Lord God, of, of demonic activity in our life, Lord God. The walls of sickness, the walls of unforgiveness, the walls of compromise, the walls of dullness. Lord God, awaken the hearts of the church this morning. We need you, Holy Spirit, come. Baptize us in fire. Come, Lord. Come. 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 church as usual. We need your presence. Break we need your presence. We need your presence. Spirit break out. Come, Lord. Oh, Our kids need you. Our marriages need you. We need you. Break lust off our hearts this morning, Lord. Dullness. Lord, let us see you rightly. Let us see you rightly. Let worship arise out of the hearts of our children this morning. We need your presence. Encounter us, living God. You've honored us with your presence. We're going to honor you with our praise. You've honored us with your presence. We're going to honor you with our praise. You've honored us with your presence. We're going to honor you with our praise.
just, I want to pastor us through this moment right now because there's breakthrough in this place for you this morning, but there's, there's a mindset that I feel like the Lord wants to break down. Two things. One is if you, you say, I, I don't want to shout, I don't want to sing because I don't feel it. Therefore, I don't want to be unauthentic. But you're not shouting, you're not worshiping, you're not singing, you're not here because of a feeling, but because of a person. And, and that, that desire to be authentic, the enemy is taking it and, and twisting it. It's not about whether you're feeling it or not. The scriptures tell us to make a joyful shout unto the Lord. So if we want to be true to the word, and you say, well, well you're telling me to shout, Robert, not the scriptures. I'm telling you the Holy Spirit's among us and he's leading us. And then there's another mindset that I feel like the Lord wants to break down this morning is we don't want to be, and, and these are from, these start in the right place. I don't want to be unauthentic. I don't, I don't want to be hypocritical. And I don't want to be given to hype and just the emotions of the moment. I don't either. We don't need hype. I'm not up here to hype you up. I'm, I'm up here under the unction of the presence of God. And if I don't follow his lead, God forbid that I even be in this role. So if your heart says, I, I don't want to be hypocritical, I don't want to be given to hype, well, don't be. Don't be. But not participating isn't, isn't solving that. It's just keeping you from breakthrough. It's just keeping you from what God wants to do. Some of you are one shout away from breakthrough. And right now, I want us, I want us to re repent means to change the way you think and get in line with truth. Some of you right now, if, if what I said resonates in your heart, you need to repent. Repent. Just say, God, I'm sorry for... for buying the lie that if I if I I don't want to be given to those things therefore I'm not going to I'm not going to engage in what you're doing in the moment I don't care how loud your shout is but engage your heart and your mouth will line up so worship team would you guys just we're just we're 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 learning to follow the lord So let's just let's just be sensitive to him, sensitive to him right now. But again, let's just begin to lift our voices to the Lord and, and let those mindsets that compete with what God wants to do let them be torn down. Let those walls come down. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. Lord, we welcome your presence. Let there be no condemnation in here this morning. Break off every religious spirit, Lord, that has made the church mute. Lord God, break it off. Break off muteness, Lord God. Lord. Lord, come. When the King of glory comes in, we shout. When the King of glory is here, we bless him. When the King of glory is among us, we honor him with the fruit of our lips, we say thank you. Come on kids, come on teenagers, come on young people, come on children. We need to shout. We need to shout, children. We need the shout of the children. Let the children cry out. Let the children cry out. Boldness, teenagers, boldness. The love for God swallow all other fears. We love you this morning, Lord. We love you, we're not ashamed baptize us in fire. Burn off all the compromise. Burn off the dullness in our hearts this morning, Lord God. Burn off, Lord God, compromise and dullness. Burn it out of our hearts this morning, Lord. Baptize us in fire, Lord.
exalts itself above the knowledge of God. We say away, away, away. Basically, we just want to take some time this morning and pray that God would heal 
their land, that they would see mighty acts of him moving, that his breath would be upon them and that they would just be able to rejoice through this tragedy. And so if you wanted to take a minute and kind of look over it, there's some information on there that we don't want to share on social media uh, because of sensitive people that are there. Uh, but you can pray over it today if you want to pray by some people by name. But what we'll do is we'll just get into groups of four or five to look around, make some new friends, and just spend a couple minutes praying for Turkey and Syria and that the Lord would just be in there with them. So go ahead and break off into groups for just a couple minutes and then we'll come back together. seconds. Let's continue to pray. Jesus. Father, we do thank you for Turkey, Jesus, and Syria. We thank you for what you're doing in their midst, Lord, in the midst of the rubble, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of chaos. Would you allow heaven and the government of heaven to completely overwhelm this nation, Lord, that you would orchestrate your love, Lord, and your compassion on the people? Would you turn the soil in this nation that, God, they would... As, a, as they're in a place of need, God, and, and hurt and pain, that they would look to you, Jesus, in this place. I thank you, God, that we pray right now for even those who are missing in the rubble 
and waiting for someone to rescue them, Jesus, that you would give wisdom to the rescue workers, Father. Would you give wisdom to the rescue workers as they unravel all of this rubble off of the people that are still trapped inside? God, we we pray a special protection over the mothers and the children, Father God, that those who have been left without mothers, that you would father the children, that you would orchestrate, Father God, your love and your mercy over these children. God, we thank you for this nation. We call it blessed in the name of Jesus. We lift it up to you, God. Begin to turn the soil that revival would happen in this nation. That, God, what the enemy meant for bad, you would turn for good, Jesus. And we thank you, God, that you're orchestrating something new here. You're orchestrating something different, Jesus. And we're asking you, God, as the rocks have been shaken, Father God, and the earth is shaken under their feet, that, Father, they would begin to sense the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. They would have visions and dreams of you, Father. In the place of pain, God, would you just show up and comfort the people. Give them visions and dreams of you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We pray for neighboring countries, Father, that will uh, will give support to this nation, God. We pray that we would lay our political uh, weaponry down and, and help this nation, Father God, that they would see the gift of God. They would see the blessing of God. They would be able to experience, Father God, love and mercy, compassion, and love. And I just thank you, Jesus, that you're doing something different. We even pray for the prime minister there, God, that you would turn his heart, turn the heart of the king, Jesus, to you and to heaven, that he would look to you, Father God. He would look to you for help, that you would give him a vision and dream, Father God, of his nation. And that this nation would turn to you, Jesus, in their desperate cry and their desperate need. And we thank you, God. We thank you for world leaders reaching out to them in such a time as this, Father God. We thank you for the emergency relief, Father God, that will come their way. God, do a deep work and turn the soil for the greater good of the kingdom of heaven. And we thank you, Jesus, that you're orchestrating something bigger than what we can think or understand or even imagine. We cry and we weep for, with those who cry and weep. We thank you for the church right now in Turkey. We pray for the church in Syria, the believers, Father God, that would be scattered among the people, that they would have a prophetic word, they would have a word from the heavens to give to the people of God, to give to the people that don't even know you, Lord. God, raise up the church in this hour in Turkey. Raise up the church in this hour in Turkey, Lord. Those who've been walking on the fence, may they fully surrender and just go all in, Father God, for your kingdom. We thank you, God. What an opportunity you give us to love and pray and to sow seed and to give and to go. In Jesus' name, God, make it happen in the name of Jesus. We do want to encourage you that we have acts of mercy um, that have hit the ground and are going to this area. If you feel called to uh, be a part of giving there, please make sure that you connect with our connect team in the back at the end. And, and, and we're all, we'll also send out, I think we've sent out a text remind of that link. But if you have not gotten that, please make sure you, you visit the connect team with that. Um, we're also going to pray for one more family, our uh, sweet fr families of ours that are part of Annie Galveston, Levy and Herb, if you guys know them. Uh, Levy was admitted to the hospital early this morning with a, a weird heart condition. And so we're just going to stop and we're going to pray for our sweet sister. Why don't you join me in just believing the Lord to heal her body. So Jesus, we thank you for Levy, our sister in Christ. God, we ask you that you would begin to orchestrate, Father, healing in her body. We call her body blessed in Jesus' name. We speak healing over her body. We speak to her heart to be strong and youthful in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you would align her body out according to your word, that by your stripes, Levy has been made whole and healed. 
And we thank you that she would feel comforted. We thank you that she would not be afraid, that she would stand in faith for her healing. We believe in signs, miracles, and wonders, Lord. We believe you can do all things, God. So may she rise up out of this bed, the doctor look at the, the EKG or whatever he needs to look at and go, what? we don't know what happened. We don't know why it's all normal now. And we thank you, God, that miracles are still existing right now. And we declare that we hold true, Father God, that you can do all things, Father. And we thank you for Levy and her healing. We thank you for even the testimony that would rise up out of her in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, if you have any type of heart issue, I just, I, I really feel like the Lord wants to do something this morning. Would you either raise your hand or stand up if you're, if you're comfortable to do any, any kind of heart, anything, please stand up. Wow. Church, put your hands on those people that are near you. This is our family. Your heart is our heart. <laughs> Lord, heal. Lord, we speak to these hearts this morning and we say, hearts, be healed. Lord, let it be here on earth as it is in heaven. And there's no heart sickness in heaven. And so we thank you that now, Lord, as, as you are among us, that you're walking among us, that you're touching every heart. And we pray for our brothers and sisters this morning for healing, Jesus. Heal. Heal, Lord. We reject the, the idea that we have to manage this the rest of our lives. doing it. Church, as we continue to host the presence of the Lord as a house, miracle signs and wonders will increase among us because heaven is increasing among us. We're not going we're not we're not going after miracle signs and wonders we're going after Jesus but when Jesus is in our midst then he's welcomed and he's adored and he's honored we get healed we get made whole we our marriages get restored our kids return it's everything else happens and we don't go after Jesus for those things but make no mistake that when heaven manifests then healing is a, is a byproduct of that so just trust that the Lord is doing it. Amen. All right. Well, we'll just continue going this morning, and we'll transition to this part of our worship service where you can bring forward your tithe and your offering. There's a couple different ways that you can give. You can look on the screen for those. If you're going to give in person, you can bring it to these boxes at the front. We just want to be obedient. This isn't giving out of compulsion. Just giving what you feel the Lord's put on your heart to give. So I'll just pray over the offering this morning. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are the best person to manage our finances, to manage any resource. And so we give it to you and we ask that you would just bless the giver, God, that they wouldn't have to worry about finances or wherever anything is coming from, God, that you would just bless them, that their cup would overflow to where they can bless others, Lord. Would you just pour it out on them, Jesus, in your name.
gathered this morning, Jesus. You're the reason we got out of bed. Because you're so great. Thank you for being great among us this morning, Lord. Lord, we just say, be welcomed in this place. The place of our hearts, Lord, as we gather together as the people of God. You're welcome here, Jesus. You to be our leader. We just thank you for dwelling among us, Lord. We want more and more of you. And I thank you, Lord, for anyone in this house that has a sick body. Your Lord, this morning, healing will flow from heaven to earth. And we just say thank you for it, Jesus. You guys can be seated. Um, 
Jesus is among us and not just because we got loud. <laughs> but there is something about that. And so I'm assuming, Frank, when, when uh, you had that word, you didn't even realize um, that on this Wednesday at Jesus night, um, we really thank you, worship team, guys. You guys did a wonderful job. But uh, Wednesday night at Jesus night, uh, there was a point in the middle of the night, and Jesus night is just where we set everything aside just to worship and adore Jesus. That's why we call it Jesus night. So, um, and there was a point in the service where uh, uh, Susie said, "Man, I feel like we uh, need to ring the bell." We have a bell in the uh, cafe, in the in the prayer room, and that bell, when when it was put in, when it was built in, was a call to worship. And so we we just as a prophetic call uh, to our to our island uh, to to turn to Jesus, we rang that bell seven times, and on the seventh time, we all began to shout. And something broke. That's why I, I left that night like, I don't know what broke, but something broke out. Something, something broke in the spirit. You can't always put your finger on, and maybe some, um, you know, among us did have more clarity. But I was just like, man, God's, God's moving. God's doing something. And what we're doing is, is learning to host his presence. And so that's why I'm trying to, in these moments, to pastor us through uh, what's happening and what we're doing so that there's, there's faith and there's, there's culture that's established in our hearts of what we're doing. We're not just singing songs. We're not just shouting. Um, but but there's, there's something that God's doing among us. And Sarah had a word that I felt like was appropriate uh, to this morning. So, Sarah, if you would just come up, and I want you to share that. And it's, she doesn't even know that it's even going to tie in with the message this morning. Can I stand here? Um, the Lord was just reminding me that worship is a warfare strategy. And you have to know that if the enemy is smart enough to be scheming all day long, brewing cocktails of defeat to bring about your life so you won't make it from morning till night, you have to know that God on the other end is on your side. And he's serious about worship. He made us innately with the desire to call out. And he's recovering the language around the church being the called out ones, the ecclesia, a governing body that recognizes that the sound that comes out of your mouth has the ability to impart the voice of heaven in the earth right now, in real time. God is out of time, but he made us in a way that we are so connected to him that he won't do anything without us. And therefore, when we call, automatically, the frequency of our sound aligns with heaven. And heaven begins to come down. That's the only way this partnership is going to work, y'all. And so when Robert comes up and says, the fivefold is a reality. Uh, in his pastorate position, the sensitivity says, guys, I sense this. I sense that. And when he said that this morning, I heard, worship is a warfare strategy. And, and, you know, we're just thanking God that increasingly he's sensitizing us to recognize this so that when you release your sound, know that heaven is coming down with discernment. And that word discernment is also key for days ahead so that whenever you hear Robert say, we're not just shouting, he, we, he's crying for discernment. God, give your people discernment to know where are you in time and what do you need to decree and declare? And out of those declarations, your voice becomes a song, and your song becomes the way you win the battle. Amen. It's so good, and it's, and it's so biblical uh, that we see that the Israelites, when they would win battles, they would first send out the worshipers. And we're like, what kind of war strategy is that? Right? It doesn't make sense to the natural mind and we're not trying to function according to the natural mind. We're not throwing our mind away, but there's, uh, there's a renewing of the mind that's, that's happening uh, as we obey the Lord. And, and God is doing something among us. If, if some of the things that Sarah shared or, or I shared this morning or that we sang don't quite make sense to you or, or feel very different 
or you're like, man, I'm not used to this, yes and amen. Because God is, is doing, uh, he's, he's reforming a new wineskin for the new wine of what he wants to do in this hour. And the church primarily is returning back to a, a worshiping church. Okay? What we've known culturally, every one of us in here, is a teaching church. Primarily, the model that we're more familiar with is the synagogue model. So what I'm about to share with you is free. You don't have to pay for any of this, okay? It's not in the notes. A little, little side, side note here. That you'll see in the early church, they went to the temple and they broke bread house to house. The temple was a place of worship. We see in, in, in Antioch in Acts 13, as they ministered to the Lord in prayer and fasting, and that's, that's this worship and, and prayer the Holy Spirit spoke to them to send out Paul. And the early church, we see this in the upper room. We see it, uh, you know, when the, anytime they would gather, they would be ministering to the Lord. That's worship. That's prayer. And then out of that, the Lord would move. And what they, the early church understood was that the church was a worshiping church. Then, so I may be giving you more history lesson than you want. But introduce Constantine, and he basically makes Christianity the religion of, of, the, of the area. But he adopts a synagogue model, not a temple model. And that's most of what we know. And so just to put it into layman's terms and simple words, most of what we're comfortable and familiar with is a teaching-centric church. But the church is returning to Jesus being in the central. And if Jesus is central, that makes us a worship, a Jesus-centric, presence-centered, worship-centered church. Does that make sense? If Jesus is in the center, it's not teaching isn't the highest priority. Jesus is our teacher. But the church's response to seeing Jesus is always worship. Y'all, I'm going to talk longer if y'all don't amen and encourage. That was a good word. That was a good word. I don't know if you're just uh, soaking it in or you're deer in headlights or you're thinking about the game later. I don't know what it is, but shake it off, okay? Because God is preparing a bride. And, and we're just getting started. We're just getting started. And, and I do want to speak again to, I know that I know that, that oftentimes what keeps us, the church, what, she shrinks back because she doesn't feel anything and she doesn't want to be unauthentic. And those are, those start as a good motive, but they have to be surrendered. God wouldn't tell us to do something you weren't pre-wired to do. So when God says, make a joyful shout, that's not just for the extrovert, extroverted loud people. You were wired that way. And when, and, and let, me, let, me, let me just give one more proof to you. If you've ever, ever taken in uh, too much of, of a stimulant, too much of a drink, too much of a, a drug or anything like that, you act outside of your character. Can I get an amen? Or you've seen, you've seen people or you've watched the movies, right? I don't know, none of y'all have never done any of that. Uh, and the Bible says, don't be filled with those things. Be filled with the Spirit. And when you are, you will act outside of what you know is your character, but you're really acting in line with who you were really created and made to be because you're filled with the Spirit. And you'll, you'll act in a way that, that is just like you feel like, man, something has come upon me, and, I, and I'm stepping outside of myself. The, the thing that competes with that is this self-awareness, self-consciousness, self, 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 me. What are they thinking about me? I'm here. I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to, you know, just I, me. And we just, you know, are so sometimes centered on that. And it's just so wonderful and freeing to set your eyes on Jesus and, and be free. What I'm going to share with us this morning is a virtue that is absolutely necessary, especially as we move into the days ahead and 
pressures and persecution and things that will that are going to come upon the church in greater measure in the days to come at some level. At some level, it's coming. It's coming. And God, in this window of time, is wanting to prepare us. And that's not just for pastors. He wants our houses to be built on the rock. This is, this message this morning is, is a rock message that, that we need to open our hearts to that's going to that's gonna just root and ground you to be able to persevere through any and every circumstance that's coming our way. And you don't have to be afraid of it. If you are afraid of, of the future, it's because you haven't secured yourself in the Lord in the present. And he wants to, he wants to just set our feet on solid ground this morning. So, Lord, help me. Nobody in this room needs to hear from me, Lord. I don't even need to hear from me. We need to hear from you, Lord. Would you speak through your word, speak through me this morning? I say that in fear and trembling, Lord. Let every word that needs to be filtered out be filtered out so that you can bring to your beautiful bride, Lord, a, a message to prepare us for the days ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I got a lot of ground to cover. Again, if you if you the quieter you are, the longer I take, guys, okay? Just how it works. Um, we're talking about the fear of the Lord. Now that that terminology doesn't necessarily bring up, you know, gumdrops and lollipops and rainbows and, and warm, fuzzy feelings. We talk about the fear of the Lord, but I hope that by the end of the message, it actually becomes something positive in your heart because it's the most positive, wonderful, beautiful, amazing virtue that you can embrace, the fear of the Lord. And so what I'm hoping to do today is just uh, peel, peel it back and bring some definition and clarity to what it is and what it isn't. But it is necessary for what God wants to do in our lives. And so uh, let me ask you a few questions. Are you satisfied right now with how close you are to God and your intimacy with him? You don't have to answer out loud. Have you grieved over any friends or family that have left the faith? Is there consistent behavior in your life that you later always regret? The fear of the Lord will will bring power to overcome, will, will keep us from, from walking astray from the Lord, and will, is, is the key to intimacy with God. Let me bring you into why we're, we're talking about this. So in the early 2000s, uh, I read a book by John Bevere called The Fear of the Lord. Has anybody read that book? If we, we need to get that book in this house, The Fear of the Lord. It's such a good book. Um, and, and that was a such a needed and wonderful foundation in my life in the early 2000s. I'm so thankful for John Bevere. And uh, I meant to get that picture for you, but We'll, we'll do it next week because we're going we're gonna to spend a few weeks on this. But uh, about two months back, we were meeting with our church leadership team, and, and God had really put, uh, I didn't use the language, the fear of the Lord, but I had the fear of the Lord in my, in my heart just stirring uh, with, with our church leadership team as we looked over, this was before 2023, uh, as we looked over decisions we were going to make, and it just dawned on me, I'm, I'm like, God, we're making decisions for the body of Christ. We don't need to do this flippantly. We don't need to do this lightly. So the way we opened up our meeting was with Acts 5, talking about Ananias and Sapphira who lied to the leadership and died <laughs> in Acts 5. That's how we like to open our church leadership meetings. You lie, you die, you know. That's how it works around here. And um, so, so just God just reminding me and stirring my heart again to the fear of the Lord, like like. The, the money that comes in, the way we handle it, the decisions we make, what we do with, with leaders and, and the way we, we develop, all of that needs to be handled in the fear of the Lord. Um, and everybody was like, yes and amen, you know, and, and we just took some time to say, God, help us. Let the, let the fear of the Lord be in our hearts as we make these decisions. But that's not just for church leadership teams. 
That's for moms, dads, students, daughters, sons. It's for everybody that's following the Lord, to, to walk in the fear of the Lord. So, so, so that happened. Um, and then I began to kind of, kind of forgot about that a little bit and uh, just began to talk to Jesus in the mornings about how I wanted to be a better friend to Jesus. Like Jesus is the best friend to us any, better than anyone. But how good of a friend you are to him is, is between you and him, right? It's, it's not always reciprocated. And I just begin to say, Lord, I want to be, a, I want to be, and I, I, I dared pray this, even though, like, I don't know that I fully have faith for it right now, but I'm praying it anyway. God, I want to be your best friend ever. Ever. Your BFF. And so that led me to some scriptures, and I wasn't expecting what I found. And I'm going to get into that in just a minute. And then about two or three weeks ago, it was on a Sunday morning. Um, I wanted to just, you know, I, I don't, um, I am not promoting, we're not going after experiences, we're going after a person. But when we do go after the Lord, things will happen. I've been walking with the Lord for about 27 or 28 years. I started when I was two, and um, that was a joke, okay? I was four. Um, no, uh, but, but the 27 years was not a joke. It's, uh, 27 or 28. And about three weeks ago, I had an encounter with the Lord on this stage, probably like no other encounter I've ever had. And it wasn't until I got up on the stage and, you know, worship was good. I mean, I'm, I was loving it, loving the Lord, but I got up on the stage and the fear of God and the love of God hit my heart at the same time, and, and all I could do was belly cry, like from deep within, I was just weeping, and so I stuck my face in that corner, and just, I couldn't talk, I couldn't, I came up here to transition us, I couldn't do it, and I'm glad for it, because the Lord uh, is, is just teaching me and breaking off of my life continually, because it's layers, but breaking out the, the, the fear of man. And you'll find a lot of leaders that there's this, there's this tension of we, we want to please God and we want to please the people of God. But you have to choose one. And for, for way too long, I chose the people of God and trying to just, you know, play, play the game and... Um, it about killed me. So God's done a, a deep work in my heart, and, and I, I've, I've chosen, we've chosen to be a church that's committed to attracting God and not people. And if that means that uh, we respond to the Lord in a way that's outside of our boxes and people don't come to our church, that's between the Lord. <laughs> I've, I've got to be honest and sincere and true to the Lord because he's the one I'm going to stand accountable to. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that as long as I'm obeying him and, uh, and he's gracious. And so I had this encounter and the, uh, uh, Susie didn't, she's like, I told her later, I said, man, God, I got hit by God. Like I've never been hit before. She's like, really? When? She didn't even know it was happening because I just, I just stuck my, myself in the corner and I just was like, God, what? What, what is that I was, I was feeling? What was going on? And, and that's the best I can and describe is it was, a, it was a collision of the fear of the Lord and the love of God at the same time. But I don't think that they're separate. And, and we're going to see that in Scripture. And so uh, I'm going to show you a, a few slides here. I'm not going to go through these. I want to encourage you to take pictures of these um, because there's, there's Scripture references you can look up later. Because this is a foundational uh, message. That, uh, that we want to keep giving our, ourselves to. Um, but the fear of the Lord, and here's some, here's some of the things that happens with, with the fear of the Lord. And just, uh, Eliza, go ahead and bring all those up there. If you want to take a picture of this, now you can. I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, 
but I just wanted you to see it. The fear of the Lord adds length to life, teaches a person wisdom, enables a person to avoid evil, leads to life, brings wealth and honor and life. Okay? Everybody got your, your picture? Amen. Moving on. Those who fear the Lord have a secure fortress and a refuge for their children. They're blessed. They are to be praised. Those who fear the Lord lack nothing. To those who fear the Lord, God confides in them, makes his covenant known to them, has his eyes on them, come on, has compassion on them, loves them, sends his righteousness to them, delights in them. Those who fear the Lord. So as, as I began to say, you know, when I was talking to, to the Lord about being his friend, I thought that just means, and it does include this, but I'm not thinking about the fear of the Lord. I'm thinking like I'm going to respond to the Lord more quickly. I'm going to do all those things. And yes and amen, that's right. But all of that comes out of embracing the fear of the Lord. And so Psalm 25, 14 is probably the most uh, important scripture that I'm going to share this morning. Maybe, maybe not say it that way, but it's, it's, just, it's just one I can't let go of. And it says this, friendship, well, there's, there's a few different versions. Um, see which one, we, did I, which one did I give you guys? Uh, go ahead and put up there Psalm uh, 25, 14. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. Go ahead and leave that up there. The friendship of the Lord. So we sing songs about, you know, I'm a friend of God. There's, there's more to that than just saying I'm his friend. Um, other versions say this, friendship with God is reserved. So think about a parking spot that's reserved. Only, only the, the person it's reserved for can park there. Friendship with God. The only people that can park in the friend zone with God are those who have reverence for him. And with them alone, he shares his secrets and his promises. The message version, <laughs> hey, don't, don't, uh, don't simmer down back there, Nick. You just, you just keep being you, man. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> God friendship, this is the message, is for God worshipers. They are the ones he confides in. The Passion Translation, you knew I was going there. You knew I was going to the Passion Translation. There's a private place reserved for the devoted lovers of Yahweh. Where they sit near him and receive the revelation secrets of his promises. Man, I just, there's just so much out of that one verse. Um, and so Solomon, who's, who's deemed the wisest man to ever have lived, he wrote Ecclesiastes, which is a good way to, a, a quick way to depression. If you want to read that book, he's just like pessimistic and cynical. And, but but he, he comes to his senses at the end. And this is how he wraps up the book. Uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. It all also can say uh, this is man's original purpose of creation. The whole duty for every man and woman. To fear God and obey his commandments. So there's some other things about the fear of God that I found surprising out of Isaiah 33, 6. This is now talking uh, about God himself. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. That's talking about Jesus. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. He treasures it. I, Isaiah 11, 2 through 3 this is also talking about Jesus, a prophetic uh, imagery about Jesus. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and spirit of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord. 
His delight is in the fear of the Lord. He treasures it. He delights it. Those that embrace it, he, he, he uh, reserves friendship for. He shares his secrets. He reveals his heart, his covenant. Now, you, say, you might say, well, that's, old, that's Old Testament. All right, I knew you were going to say that. Philippians 2.12. <laughs> Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This is the pathway to maturity in Christ. Do you know people that have been Christians, I'm going to say it in air quotes because that means that's a broad term in the United States of America, can mean about just about anything, but, but they've been walking with, they've been claiming that for a long time. And this is, not to, this, is, this is not to judge or critique because we're going to look at our own lives. But where we, we see compromise, where we see dullness of heart, where we don't see fruit, where we don't see obedience, it's a lack of the fear of the Lord. It doesn't mean you don't love Jesus necessarily, but that you haven't embraced the fear of the Lord and and God wants to bring us to this place, and it's a beautiful, wonderful thing, okay? We're going to define it here a little bit better, and what needs to be said right off, uh, right out of the gate is that the fear of God is not to be scared of him. It's not to be scared. It, how can you be a friend with someone you're scared of? That's called a bully. <laughs> That's not your friend. You say, well, and if it doesn't mean to be scared, why does the Bible use the, the, the term fear? Well, fear is, is actually, uh, there can be negative fears and there can be positive fears. And negative fears produce, you know, negative things. And that could be, you know, you're afraid of um, public places. And so you, you could miss out on things that God wants to do in your life or uh, you're, uh, you know, afraid of um, rejection. You don't, don't step out into things that God's called you to or afraid of failure or wh whatever. You could be afraid of, of the wrong things. Um, but there's also a, a fear that, that helps keep you alive. You know, you're, you're afraid of falling off a cliff. So you don't, you only, you don't walk, you know, on the edge. And, and there, are, there are healthy fears. Oftentimes when we think of fear, we only think of the negative. But this is the most positive fear that you and I could embrace. Um, but it's, it's more than just, just a fear. So uh, looking back at Moses and the Israelites, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know right now that the answer that's probably going to come to your mind first is the wrong answer. But I'm going to ask it anyway so, so that we'll all remember. Where, this is, this is Bible trivia, kids. Are you all ready? I'm not trying to insult you saying kids, just being funny. Um, where was Moses leading the Israelites when he took them out of Egypt? Come on. Mount Sinai. If you're like me, my first thought to that, to that question was where? The promised land, of course. That's all, that's, hey, milk and honey, baby. That's, that's, that's where we're headed. But God had invited the Israelites to come to Mount Sinai, which is where Moses encountered God in the burning bush. And when and we're not going to look into this. We may look into it next week. Um, but when they, they uh, Moses tells them, hey, go tell the people to get themselves ready, to consecrate themselves. They're going to meet me on, on this mountain, and I want to meet with them. I want all my people. This is what he said in Exodus 19.4. Just listen. You've seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. God's heart and desire was, is, and always will be to dwell among his people and to draw us close to himself. When he, when he brought the Israelites out of Egypt, it was to bring them to himself close the way that Moses had encountered him. Moses met him on, on Mount Sinai. And God says, bring all of, all of the, what, 200 million or whatever it was, 2 million. Uh, that's a big difference there. But millions, um, bring them to the mountain. And, and when they did, what they experienced was intense lightning, darkness, smoke, 
it was scary to them. And they did not want to enter in. So they tell Moses, no way, Jose. You go up there and you just tell us what God says and we'll obey. That doesn't work, by the way. If you don't hear from the Lord yourself, you don't obey. You can follow some rules and try to adjust your life and be good and not chew or go with girls that do, but you're not going to obey the Lord unless you have a personal relationship with him. There's no pastor, leader, teacher that can just teach you into obedience. It doesn't work that way. It's a heart transformed by him. And so what does Moses say to them? It seems like in Exodus 20, 20, Moses is not making sense, but, but you can see here what God was trying to do. Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you that his fear may be before you so that you may not sin. And it sounds like it's it's contradicting, he's contradicting himself here. He says, don't fear, because God has come to test you that his fear may be before you so that you may not sin. And what he was saying is, Don't be afraid of God, but embrace God in such a way that you esteem him higher than any other. You honor him higher than any other. You see his worth higher than any other. He's not like someone else. He's not your good neighbor next door. He's the Lord God Almighty. He's worthy of praise and honor and and adoration all the days of our life. And it's his breath in your lungs. So give it back to him. Bless him. Praise him. Honor him. Adore him. Live your life in such a way that you hold him higher than any other. There's no close second. That's what he was saying is don't approach God flippantly, but don't be scared either. Who knows what would have happened had the Israelites obeyed and come to God. So God then sets up the tabernacle. That was not God's first choice. His first choice was to bring them all to himself just like he did with Moses. God wasn't like, man, I just really love me some tabernacles. Let's figure out how we can make, you know. No, he loves people. And he was making a way. Uh, for his people to interact with him in such a way, but it wasn't what, it wasn't the nearness that he was desiring. So let me say this as well. If you're scared of God, it's because you have something to hide. But if, if you're standing in awe of God, then there's nothing to hide, but you're terrified of being away from God. That there's something in your heart that, that is so, brings so much sobriety to your heart that I'm afraid that I would, I would be separated from God. I'm afraid that our fellowship would be interrupted. And there's a fear of the Lord there. Okay? So let me give some, some more definition here that's, that I think is going to help. Um, the, the word reverence or awe, to fear God, means to respect, to esteem highly, to revere, to honor, to venerate, to adore, to be in awe above anything or anyone else. And the fear of God swallows up all other fears. There, the fear of God is so beautiful, so powerful. So if, if uh, the Lord had rev- revealed to me probably about 10 years ago that I was really operating in the fear of man, if I had just... And so then I began to, like, fight the fear of, man, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to be confident. Now I'm fighting fear. It's just swinging in the wind. How do you fight fear? You embrace the fear above all. You embrace the fear of God, and it absorbs. It swallows up all the other fear. So if you battle with fear of what others will think, fear of what others will say, fear of what others, all these fears that we all try to manage and and just, you know, work through and deal with, let the fear of the Lord swallow all of them up. And you you will be willing to be obedient where before you were afraid and timid. Because you're walking in the fear of the Lord. You don't want anything to interrupt your your intimacy with him. I have a video for you guys that I think is going to help add a little bit of uh, just like the the fear of the Lord. Because it's it's an awe 
but it's also the most enjoyable ride of your entire life, okay? And so there's, there's a wave here uh, that I, I want to show you guys. This was actually, uh, Susie and I took a trip to um, Hawaii, and they got footage of me actually riding this wave. It's, it's pretty amazing. Do we have that queued up? Here we go. This is not me, by the way. But right now it's like, oh, this is beautiful. This is so much fun. Now we're getting terrified. Now we're in awe. Now we're not sure that we should have gotten on this thing. But there's no turning back. Now we're in the ride of our life, baby. Does he make it? Uh, uh, I don't know. Ah, yeah. What's funny is the title of this is World's Largest Wave to Ever Surfed, and it's like they've, now the records like double this. That's like a small wave now. But the awe of God is, is similar. I mean, in one, you know, we're just looking at God's creation. You can look at God's creation and be in awe and be, be struck by the power. I mean, just let God plop you out in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of a storm. And you just God's creation, and, and the Bible says that God took all the waters that are on the planet and measured them with his hand. Yet we can look at a wave and go, wow. It's, it's, it's not even comparable to the creator of it. We, we need eyes to see the Lord. And the fear of the Lord will help you to see him more rightly and more clearly. If your heart isn't responding in wholehearted adoration and devotion in, 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 in a certain area of your life, you want to embrace the fear of the Lord. So let me say this, and then, and then we're going we're gonna to respond here. But, but here's, here, if you want to sum up what it means, it means that we love what he loves, and we hate what he hates. Now let me say this so this is crystal clear. God doesn't hate people. So if you look over at a group of people and you're like, they need the fear of the Lord. Like, they do. Yes, that's true. Um, but the fear of the Lord is not a bat to, 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 you know, hit people with. And the fear of the Lord is not... Um, for us to justify not liking a certain people group or not liking a certain political group or not liking a certain religious expression or not liking you know, someone on our job or whatever because we know that they're doing something that God hates, but God loves them. P.S., you and I were doing all of those things and worse as well, and the mercy of God was, was given to us, and God loves those people. God loves them, whoever it is that maybe comes to mind. So when we love what he loves, we hate what he hates. And just make sure that you're clear in your own heart that he loves people. So now's our chance to respond. Let me just, just rattle some things off to you as we close here of the benefits of the fear of the Lord. It's the key to intimacy with God. It's the beginning of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. It gives foresight and clear divine direction. It's how we mature our salvation and are conformed into the image of Jesus. It produces a pure heart and a holiness. It produces you feeling clean before God and man. When you embrace the fear of God, you feel clean. It secures eternal legacy. It produces confidence, fearlessness, and security. It swallows up all other fears. It gives us identity. It makes us productive and gives us the ability to multiply. 
It provides angelic assistance, enduring success, fulfilled desire, enduring uh, nobility, influence, longevity, productive days. It brings great joy and happiness, enjoyment of life. The fear of the Lord endures forever. Forever. Satan and a third of the angels didn't have the fear of the Lord. This is, this is something you choose. This isn't something that just falls upon you. You choose to esteem him highly. You choose to honor him more than any other. You choose to, to follow him beyond what anyone else says or does or doesn't do. You, you, you resolve in your heart that he's the most worthy. And you can grow in this and develop in this. And this is what I, I want to encourage us in our response. Second Chronicles 16, 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those who heart, whose heart is loyal to him. God is searching the earth for a people whose heart esteem him as worthy. He's looking for a people who believe that he's worthy and are loyal to him. And I want to call us this morning to repentance of lesser lovers, other gods. This is, this is what God told the Israelites. Have no other gods before me. That's not just the, the plastic trinket in the corner that people worship. That too, it includes that. But having no other gods before me means that God, that Jesus himself has total preeminence. He's first He's the most special and unique person in your life, and you don't give that place to anyone else, not even yourself. It's reserved for him alone. There's no other gods before him. And that's not because he's narcissistic and he just has a big ego. It's because it's who he is. He doesn't fit on any other shelf in your life. He's so big. So amazing, so majestic, so full of splendor, so full of worth, so beautiful, so worthy of honor and adoration. He has to go first because it's who he is. And if you embrace him as that way, then you have all, all everything else falls in place. But I want to make it clear that this looks like your time. This looks like your talents. This looks like your treasures. Right now in the body of Christ, it is so difficult to build things that God wants to do in a community because people are coming and going, halfway committed, halfway in and out, excuses and in and up and, and all around. And they only want God when they need God. And God is looking for a people, even if it's just a handful, even if it's a, a small group that says, God, we will esteem you as the worthy one on Monday through Sunday. And your grace is sufficient, but we choose to fear the Lord. And this is, this is where I want to end with Proverbs 2. Say, if, oh, we're going to be here a while, this right here. If I, I'm going to read it as if you, it, but it's if I. Proverbs 2. Now you don't have to repeat anymore. Just listen. If you receive my words, treasure my commands, incline your ear to wisdom, apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment, if you lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you'll understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of of God. This is knowledge that, that supersedes your, your three pound brain that you and I have. That's great. But there's a knowledge of God that exceeds that capacity. And you become Him. You're transformed into His image because you're receiving, you're treasuring, you're inclining. You're applying, you're crying out, you're lifting up, you're seeking, you're searching, and you're not doing that alone. 
You're doing it in the body of Christ. No more lone rangers. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it alone. You weren't wired to live alone. You say, well, I got me and my family. You don't, you don't need any help with your kids? You don't need any help with your marriage? You don't need any help fulfilling the Great Commission on the earth? You don't need any help making disciples? You don't, you don't need any help training people? They're like, well, I thought that was your job, Robert. No, no, no. It's our job. We're the body of Christ. And we need each other. And the early church embraced this, this mindset and the awe of God settled upon a people. And it's coming back. As, as we awaken to his worth, this is the reason we want to open up the, the prayer room every day of the week. We want to give ourselves to honoring him, blessing him, because we're seeing him more rightly finally by the grace of God. We're seeing him more clearly and we are becoming a worshiping people understanding that this is who we are and when we put him in his rightful place, it's what we're made for. So stand to your feet. Some this morning, we need to repent of other gods. Just begin to ask the Holy Spirit, God, is there any other, are there other lovers, other gods, uh, other people, other, uh, the way you'll know this, this shows up in fear. Fear of man. You've, you've, chosen, you've chosen God uh, to be second place. And, and you, you serve what you fear. You worship what you fear. And so just repent right now. That doesn't, that doesn't mean you have to, to put yourself in, in time out and, and discipline yourself. You just, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I've put mankind in a, in a, in a higher place than you. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry you haven't had first place in my life, God. I have. I choose to step off the throne this morning in my own life, Lord, and put you in your rightful place, allow you to be in your rightful place, esteem you higher than even myself. With my time, with my capacities, with my money, with, with my treasures, with everything that I have, it's yours. And if your life, for the most part, is in alignment, then God is calling us deeper to receive, to treasure, to incline, to, to go after the heart of God like he's a hidden treasure, to cry out, to seek God's presence as silver, as hidden treasures with the body of Christ. Prayer team, please come forward. If you need prayer for any reason this morning, we're just going to take a few minutes as we conclude the service. If you, if you need prayer for anything, nothing's too small. Let a, let a trusted brother or sister pray with you before we go.
loving Jesus throughout the week. And so those times will be tonight. It's from 5 to 6 p.m., not 5 to 7, 5 to 6. And then early morning on Tuesday from 6 to 7, and Thursday night from 6 to 8. So we love you guys. We can't wait to see you in the prayer room and next Sunday. Join a life group, and we'll see you next week.